Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason and I'm here to bring you your retrospective on UFC Fight Night Moicano versus Korean Zombie. This was not the best night for us. We only got really a handful right, but let's go ahead and talk about the event. Here's the show. <laughs> Starting with our main event, we had Korean Zombie defeating Hinato Moicano in a fight that we were not able to call correctly. So in this fight, Moicano made absolutely no strikes, no takedowns, no anything. He didn't perform anywhere near to, I think, what his level and ability is. Korean Zombie hits him with that great flush overhand right, and this thing ends up with a ground and pound KO slash TKO. At 58 seconds in, there's really nothing to say here except that we got it wrong. We uh, could not account for that knockout ability for uh, the Korean Zombie. I talked about how his chin may have been over-punished in his last bout with Yair Rodriguez. However, this was not the case. His chin proved to be fine because he didn't take any blows. And it was actually Moicano's chin that seemed to be the softer, more glass piece in this bout. And we ended up picking this one incorrect. So, Congrats to Korean Zombie, you know, I <laughs> can't sleep on you, and uh, I really didn't based on the numbers, they were pretty close, but either way though, Moicano took, a, took an L for us here, and that's just the way it goes sometimes, so that's uh, how a lot of these are going to go. In our co-main, we had uh, one fight canceled, the John Lineker fight did not take place, and so, you know, we got to move on to the next one. Randy Brown defeated Brian Barbarina in what was a very good co-main. So I thought that Bi Brian Barbarina was getting the better of Brown early on. You could see that I think he had wobbled Brown. And I think, you know, we saw this playing out as most people did. He was a pretty heavily favored fighter. And then Randy Brown, towards the end of the second, third round, Barbarina was just tired and he started pouring on the poured on the gas late in the fire, and he slowly just turned the tables, turned the tide, and was able to pick up a W here. And he also was able to maintain a pace. I think Barbarina, he just couldn't maintain that pace that he put on early in the first round, and he ended up being outstruck almost 2-1 to one in this fight uh, just because that gas tank just was not there to back him up. And so he ended up having Randy Brown put Brian Barbarina away in the third via KO kick. In another matchup that we did not get correct, we had Andre Uhl taking out Anderson Dos Santos. I said the Brazilians were going to roll here in Greenville. That was just not the case here, really. Uh, so Anderson Dos Santos, you know, he, he looks really, you know, nowhere near as good as Uhl on the feet. I mean, that was 100% certain, but he did manage to get takedowns. The problem was that Uhl just seemed so elusive, especially when they got to the ground. He was able to make great scrambles, and Dos Santos was never able to really get full control. I believe he did sort of you know, kind of towards the end of the fight, but it was really too late. You know, it was towards the end of the round at that, and he couldn't really do anything with it. Um, you know, he was making some lunging takedowns. He was really trying to get across the cage to grab the guy, and uh, it, it just didn't work out. Had he kept him down or got a takedown in maybe four minutes into one of the rounds, I'm uh, sorry, uh, one minute in with four to go, he would have potentially defeated Uhl. You know, he definitely had that grappling advantage. You saw how easily he passed his guard, and he may have been able to take the back. He may have been able to get in a hardened arm triangle. Uh, you know, he, he did get in a mount easy too. It's just the timing wasn't there. You know, Ul was able to get back to his feet on a lot of occasions. So he just wasn't able to exploit his superior grappling ability as well as Ul was able to keep him at bay and stay rangy. So we ended up getting this one wrong in this fight. In our next matchup, we had Andrea Lee taking on Montana De La Rosa in what was, again, kind of an Anderson Dos Santos Andre Ulo affair. So Andrea Lee just boxes up uh, Montana just real bad, you know, outstrikes her like mad, even gets her own takedowns in, slams her down. Montana did get a couple of takedowns in. You know, she, she got five actually on the night. Just we're talking about not doing anything with these things. No real ground and pound. Uh, no real, you know, a submission attempts. It just wasn't a whole lot there and ended up being a little bit disappointing for me. You know, we, we try to, you know, look at those grapplers and think that they can get it done sometimes. And it, it just isn't the case if the other fighter is just going to be too elusive and get back to their feet where, you know, they want the fight to live. So if you can't impose your will, you can't close the door, you can't get it done. And I think we saw this a few times tonight, especially in this Lee Montana bout. And again, we didn't, we ended up getting this one incorrect. 
All right, finally, a W on the evening. Kevin Holland defeats Alessio DiCurio in what was a great fight. So we saw Holland have a just a superior technique, I think, on, over Securio. Securio had those, you know, hard shots that he was swinging. I mean, the guy was swinging for the fences over and over again because I think he thought he was losing. But he did get a couple takedowns in himself. And again, the elusiveness plays out where he can't really do much with him. And Holland ends up picking up the W because of his superior technical striking on the evening. However, again, made me nervous because if any of those Alessio shots or head kicks had hit, uh, this thing might have been all done. But Holland stayed elusive, stayed with it, and he was able to win the fight. So hats off to Holland. Thank God we got a win finally on this card. All right, with another W, we've got Dan Ige defeating Kevin Angel of Death Aguirre in what was a very good fight. But Ige was just the superior boxer, outdid him 2-1, to one, same number of takedowns. He was able to pass uh, Aguirre three times. Uh, anytime they got into a scramble, and it was just a good fight overall. This was probably one of the best fights on the card. I was really happy to call it, and there's not much more I can say about it. Just I love seeing Ige fight. I look forward to him fighting again, and uh, he's definitely a favorite on this podcast, on this metric. Um, we always got to go with the numbers, but I really do like Ige. And so, again, I hope to see him fight again. We did uh, pick up. Hey, we got two Ws. <laughs> you know, got to be happy about that. We got a couple more coming, but. Uh, let's get to another L. In our next matchup, we had Ashley Yoder defeating Suri Kondo in what was just a, a really tough fight to watch. You know, um, Kondo just could not get to her feet, could not outdo uh, Yoder's grappling in any way. Yoder just held her down and beat her up, and Kondo really at no point could display any of her kickboxing skills. It was pretty bad. Um, and, uh, I was, I was frustrated to watch it because, you know, the fights obviously started on their feet and Yoda within a minute of almost every round was basically just going, nope, we're going to the ground. You don't belong here. And I'm going to show you why. And, uh, you know, uh, hats off to Yoda. She put in a fine performance. Um, really, I mean, I say fine. She put in a spectacular performance against a fighter where I think had she tried to, you know, stand and bang with her or have a kickboxing fight. Condom might have gotten the edge, but she said, no, this is an MMA fight. I'm going to take you down. I'm going to put you into my world, and I'm going to, you know, beat, beat the ever-loving daylights out of you. Uh, so that's just how we saw it play out. And, uh, again, picking up an L, but, uh, you know, like I said, we will get back to a W eventually. we just got a few more to go through. All right, another W. Sorry, another L. <laughs> I guess I can skip to a W. Uh, Luis Pena defeats Matt Wyman. Now, I didn't want to pick Wyman, but I had to go off the numbers, and the numbers were, you know, for uh, you know his last fights, which had been three or four years ago at this point, and so we had to go with them. Uh, just didn't work out too well. I think that Wyman, uh, he just he, he just wanted to play jujitsu the entire time. He tried to go for heel hook. I don't know. Uh, eight, nine times, he, he just kept wrapping him up, and, uh, you know, Pena just was not having it, you know, especially in the later rounds, they're sweaty, you know, it's tough to grab hold of that, and uh, Wyman just did not look good, in fact, you know, I think even the commenters, and myself included, were like, geez, how much damage are you going to take, man, and uh, the commenters were like, hey, just throw in the towel, basically, you know, and uh, he ended up taking too much damage early into the third round, goes down, TKO punches, and Pena gets a win, um, he did say Wyman was a great competitor, and I think he was. You know, he did hold up to Pena pretty well, but it was mostly toughness. You can't lean on your toughness without having something else to back it up like we talk about. And Wyman just, I don't think he just doesn't have it anymore. You know, the layoff was probably too long, and maybe he's got too much ring rust. I don't know if the guy's coming back. Maybe he just needed a payday. There's a whole bunch of questions out there. Still, hats off to Wyman, though. You are a tough SOB. And again, um, I am happy about Pena's W because I do like him more ultimately. He's... Definitely an up-and-comer, and I am looking to call more of his fights, hopefully as W's for Pena. So, picking up an L here, but hey, that's how it plays out. All right, so in our next fight, I have one note here. This is uh, Rosenstruck defeating Crowder. I have KTFO because he was knocked the F out. Uh, Rosenstruck has some definite crazy power in his hands, and uh, he threw a jab on Crowder, and Crowder's chin just crumbled right in front of us. Uh, all team CTE there. A guy just goes down. It's nine seconds in. It's like the fastest heavyweight knockout in the history of the UFC. It's right up there between the fastest knockouts in MMA, I'm sure, in general, nine seconds. Uh, there's really nothing else to say here. Rosenstruck throws four punches overall. Alan Crowder does nothing, much like Moicano, and he just goes down. Uh, we did have Crowder here. Had he been able to, you know, eat a shot, you might have been able to exploit some ground game advantage I thought he had. But, hey, that is not how this thing played out. And it looks like Rosenstruck picked up some performance of the night money. So, hey, hats off to him. 
All right, in our last two fights, we do actually have W's, four W's overall. So Molly McCann defeats Ariane Lipsky in what was a great fight. The whole crowd was behind her. They were chanting, meatball, meatball, meatball. And it was just fun. I like watching the scouser, Molly McCann. I thought she was going to defeat Lipsky. I thought she was going to just show that she has, you know, that wider depth of experience, uh, even though, you know, Lipsky is kind of a hot up-and-comer, and she is literally hot. You know, I think that's why they UFC would like to make her into a star. She's probably the most beautiful fight fighter in all of the UFC. Let's let's not uh, put any doubts behind that. Uh, and Molly McCann, I mean, you know, she's a woman. And <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to keep that in. Whatever. F- uh, screw it. Uh, so Molly McCann, uh, you know, she's, yeah, nothing else to say there. She's a great fighter and she got the W here. I thought she outclassed Lipsky in every way. Got her nice takedowns in to kind of seal it up. And uh, we did pick up the W here. So hey, she's saving our bacon one way or the other. And then in our last fight, Duran Wynn defeats Eric Spicely in what actually was fight of the night. Duran Wynn went out, made a great UFC debut. Spicely came back into the UFC, proved maybe he shouldn't really be there. Uh, Duran Wynn outstruck him 169 to 108. And just, well, what was a great fight? You know, I think Spicely did, you know, connect with Wynn with some pretty good shots. But mostly, Wynn was, you know, boxing up Spicely for the most part as the numbers kind of show at the striking. And it was a great fight. I do hope to see Wynn again. And a uh, little shout out to Spicely. He said that his bank account was negative when he worked into this fight. And he got that 50G payday. So, hey, hats off to him to getting uh, the fight of the night bonus. So, you know, even if you don't get your win money, you can get some, uh, you know, performance money always happy to see that all right so like i said we went four for 11 on the night this is a roughly 36 percent accuracy so this is well below what we want uh you know it, it is what it is i did make changes to the metric um there are some pretty serious changes i think this would be an entirely new version to be perfectly honest even some of the data i'm collecting now is a little bit different so uh, that'll be tested and worked on for our next podcast. That is the metric I'm going to use for our next event here. We have a fight night where Junior Dos Santos will be defe- uh, <laughs> defeating. Uh, oh, that's a uh, that's a preview. That's too close to a preview. Uh, Francis Ngano will be taking on Junior Dos Santos in what I think will be a very good matchup. Uh, but I did just throw in a little preview there. I crunched one fight. How about that? I crunched one fight, and uh, I usually do the main ahead just to see kind of how I feel about it. Um, and you know what? Since I already just kind of said defeat, um, when I crunch fights, sometimes I'll be like, nah, that can't be. There's no way in hell he defeats him. Like I, Perfect example, when uh, Usman was defeating Woodley, I was like, nah, like this is ridiculous. I, my, my numbers suck. This is stupid. And lo and behold, uh, Tyron Woodley gets the crap kicked out of him. Um, so when I look at my numbers and I go, wait, how does that guy defeat that? I ultimately, even if I feel weird about it, it's usually for the best. When I look at the card and I go, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's how I would personally pick it too. Um, a lot of the time, uh, I'm like, wow, all right, I'm wrong. So <laughs> uh, that's just how it goes. Anyways, uh, that's a preview, I guess, for the next uh, podcast. I got to finish crunching the fights uh, so that we can get this out. I know this is also arriving late as well, so I do apologize for that. Set some things going on where I wasn't able to record, and I definitely wasn't feeling a recording. Uh, you know, we don't we, we want to avoid every single humble cast we can. So if I can do these with a few days retrospective and not be so bummed out about it, it's definitely going to make for a better show. Believe you me, right? As Michael Bisbing would say. All right, so let's get into housekeeping. You can get in touch with the Fighting Spirit Podcast at Fighting Spirit Podcast at gmail.com. We're on Twitter at MMA Fight Picks Zero One. Get in touch with us there. We're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to the videos. Uh, we're also on your platform of choice to listen to podcasts. Find us the Fighting Spirit Podcast. And I think that's about it. So I will be back with a new podcast to do the fight picks for that fight we were just talking about, where I'm just going to say it, Junior Dos Santos is supposed to defeat Francis Ngannou. If that changes for whatever reason, if I go back, look at the numbers, and realize I just crunched it wrong, I'll change it the next podcast, so please listen to that one. But uh, more than likely, it won't change, and that is the fight we uh, have crunched. All right, so I am now rambling. I think it's certifiable, and we will be back with another show. Until then, happy fight picking.